Welcome! In this video, I'll show you how to solve problem 2.46 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now, this problem states the following. It says, consider this potential, which is infinity if x is smaller than zero and alpha times the delta potential of x minus a if x is greater or equal to zero. And here, a and alpha are positive real constants with the appropriate units. And the particle starts out in the well, so between 0 and a, but because of tunneling, its wave function gradually leaks out through the delta function barrier. What we have to do is solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation for this potential, impose appropriate boundary conditions, and determine the energy E. And we can, you know, just get to an implicit equation. We don't really have to worry about uh, solving exactly. And then in part b, we need to understand why our result from part A is going to be a complex a number. And in part C, we will rewrite the energy as the sum of our real and imaginary part. And we will calculate in terms of gamma the characteristic time it takes the particle to leak out of the well. That is, the time it takes before the probability is 1 over E that it's still in the region zero between 0 and A. Um, so that is what we have to do. So part A, we now need to... Um, find the wave function, basically. Now, our problem is, if this is the potential, right, we have an infinite potential right here before, um, in, in x smaller than zero, so if this is zero. And then at x equals a, we have this delta function here. Of course, not a very good uh, representation, but this is just so that we know that there is a delta function there. So we have two regions of interest. So let's find our wave function. Well, this is something we have done very, very often. We solve the Schrodinger equation for the potential equal to zero, and we will get something like a e to the i k x plus b e to the minus i k x. And that's, that is for region one. And for region two, we get the same thing, except that we only have a wave traveling to the right. Um, there is no wave traveling to the left, of course, because uh, where would it even come from, right? So um, that is the solution, as we have seen many, many times before. If you're unsure where that came from, you should go back a few videos um, where we discuss this in more detail. Now, step number two, as usual, is to apply boundary conditions, right? So apply boundary conditions. Now, this time there is an additional boundary condition, because as before, we have the continuity of psi at x equals a, which gives us that a e to the i k a plus b e to the minus i k a has to be equal to f e to the i k a. But we also have the discontinuity of psi at x equals a. Uh, so not of psi, but of the derivative, so psi prime. And this is also something we have done uh, a lot of times before, right? This is just the same as the, our usual dealing with the delta potential. Um, so in this case, we get, let's see, so taking this derivative, we get i k times f, and then we have minus this derivative. So we get a, and of course we still need the exponent, so i k a e to the i k a, and then when we take this derivative, we get a minus sign, which cancels out of the minus sign in front. So we get plus b e to the minus i k a. And this is the same as this is 2 m alpha divided by h bar squared and times our wave function um, psi evaluated at a. And here we can either plug in this or this, right? We know that they are the same. Um, let's go for a e i k a plus b e minus i k a. You could go for either one of them, um, but I know that our goal later on is going to be to eliminate f. So eliminating it right away um, is just a good place to start. So this is our condition number two. We have one, two, and we still need to apply the condition that since there is an infinite potential here, our wave function at, z at x equals zero must be zero. So at x equals zero, 
we need our wave function to be zero. So that means that by continuity of the wave function at x equals zero, we need a e to the i k zero plus b e to the minus i k zero, we need it to be zero. Of course, these exponents will be one. So basically, this tells us that a has to be equal to minus b. So these are our three conditions. So now we can just plug everything into equation two. So let's divide by i k, right? Let's put it on this side. And let's plug in for f what we have up here. So equation one. So we get instead of f e i k, or actually we can plug in for f e i k a, right? So we get a e i k a plus b e to the minus i k a minus a e i k a plus b e to the minus i k a. This is equal to 2m alpha h bar squared a e i k a plus b e minus i k a. And let's not forget about the i k um, that we still had there. Okay, so now we can apply the this condition that a is equal to minus b. It doesn't matter which one you substitute, um, it's going to be the same in the end. I'm gonna just replace b for minus a, um, because I don't know, I prefer to have a, but it really doesn't matter. So this cancels out this, um, and then this b will be minus a. So let me get rid of this and this, this b, actually this and this and that. All of those will be minus a. So we get minus a, minus a, minus a. Now we can simply divide by a everywhere and we get e to the minus i and actually let's do something else as well because we have e to the minus i k a and here and here. So if we multiply the entire equation by e to the i k a it's going to be much simpler because now here the a is gone so this is only minus one and this is zero right e to the zero which is one. Um, and here we have, well, actually another minus one, so there we go. Then here we have 2m alpha divided by h bar squared k. And this i, we can write, we can basically multiply and divide. So this i becomes i squared. So basically we get minus i in the numerator, minus i. And then we have... Um, this a cancels out and we have e to the 2i k a minus 1. And this right here is simply minus 2, but we can cancel the minus sign with the 1 on the right. So we get 2 is equal to this and we can divide by 2 and we get this. So this is the equation that implicitly gives us the value of k. We would have to graph this um, just as we did in previous cases. Um, but the problem doesn't really require us to do that. And notice that unlike before, this time, because of the condition that A had to be equal to minus B, we ended up getting that this is a complex amount. And considering that K is equal to the square root of 2ME over H bar, right? This equation, which implicitly gives us K, implicitly gives us, gives us the energy. So that means that the energy will also be complex. And that is something that doesn't make sense. As part B tells us, right, we have we had proven right at the beginning of the chapter that the energy has to be real. So what's going on? Well, the reason behind that is that when we proved that, our condition was that our function needed to be normalizable. And that is not the case here, right? We, we cannot normalize this wave function. So that is why um, our theorem that we had proven before failed, right? Because this doesn't meet the criteria for that uh, theorem. And now part C tells us that we should write the energy as a sum of a real and a complex part. And we want to calculate the characteristic time it takes for the particle to leak out of the well. That is the time it takes before the probability is one over E that it's still in the region between zero and A. Okay. So um, let's write our wave function as a function of time, right? Which is simply our wave function as a function of x times 
e to the minus i e t over h bar. We often forget about this part, right, the time dependence, because not many problems we encounter uh, ask, us to, ask us to consider it. Um, but, you know, just do don't forget about it. Okay. And let's now write, of course, what, a, what e is. We know that e is e0 plus i gamma. That's what we are going to write in. So this is psi of x, e to the minus i e0 t over h bar. And then we get e to the minus, but then we get i squared, right? One there and one there. So we get another minus. We get plus gamma t over h bar. So now when we take the probability of finding our x comma t squared, now it's important to write the x comma t dependence because this is not the same as this, right? And this is psi of x modulus squared. And now this part cancels out because we multiply, we multiply by its complex conjugate. So we have minus i e0 t over h bar plus i e0 t over h bar. But this part doesn't cancel out. So we get e to the 2 gamma t over h bar. And now we want to know what is the probability of finding, or well, basically that, that our, our wave function will only have 1 over e. So basically we want this, or let me write it explicitly, we want the case where our probability is now this amount. So the initial amount over e, right? This is the initial probability. We want to know when the in initial probability has been reduced to itself divided by one by, by e, right? Um, okay, so this has to be equal to psi of x squared e to the 2 gamma t over h bar. And of course, these two probabilities are the same. So um, we get 1 over e is equal to e to the 2 gamma t divided by h bar. Now we can take the natural log. So we get the natural log of e to the minus 1 is equal to 2 gamma t over h bar. Um, we can here use the properties of the natural log. So we get minus natural log of e is equal to 2 gamma t over h bar. And finally, natural, natural log of e is 1. So we get minus 1 is 2 gamma t over h bar. Or the time that it takes for this to occur is minus h bar divided by 2 gamma. So we need, of course, uh, gamma to be negative for time to be positive, which is what has to happen for this to make any sense. So there we go. Um, this does show us that the energy here is uh, complex, and of course it doesn't really make any physical sense. Um, but that is the situation if we had um, such a potential. So it was an interesting exercise to make. Now, I hope this was useful, useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe. And if you really enjoy my content, maybe consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.